Hi, this is Catherine Connor. I live in Wilson, Louisiana, in East Feliciana Parish. And here's my story. Um, I'm in, each, I'm in uh, front of East Feliciana Parish Prison where my 20-year-old uh, son has been housed. Um, on um, uh, abs uh, uh, attempted obscenity uh, conviction. During the summer of 2009, my then 17-year-old son, Matthew Moore, was accused of indecent exposure by two senior educators, old enough to be his grandmother, Ms. Deborah Collins Anderson, Uh, uh, Ms. Deborah Collins Anderson was the first one, huh? That's the warden there. Yeah. yeah, was it? Yeah. The warden, that was Ray Newman. He's the warden for East Feliciana Parish Prison. Yeah, and he just uh, circled around us. Yes. And then we kind of raced off a little bit. Yes, yes. He didn't stop to even say hi, did he? No, he's probably going to tell his cronies. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew was accused by of, <coughs> Matthew was accused of indecent exposure by senior citizen educator Ms. Deborah Collins Anderson while working during the school uh, student program, as he had done for uh, 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 fifth, uh, as he had done since he was 15. She claimed she saw him indecently exposed while walking on a hall behind her. He adamantly denied her accusation. There weren't any witnesses. She claimed she saw Matthew uh, with his uh, genitals over his waistband walking on every hall. She told me she asked if he was modeling for her in a joking way. When I told her this was inappropriate, for someone she claimed was exposing himself, et cetera. Her story and her, her story sounded suspicious. I asked to view school cameras, but was ignored. She said she was going to recommend he be sent to another work site. I voiced my suspicions uh, about Miss Anderson's story to the superintendent, such as why she followed him downstairs. Uh, outside, why did she report it after four days? And others were in the building, including his supervisor. She told me she asked Matthew if he was modeling for her. After I spoke to the superintendent, and uh, he, he uh, voiced that he wanted to know why she waited so late to uh, report it also, and wanted to know why she waited uh, I mean, why did she follow him outside after she said she had saw him exposed? Well, he must have confronted her because she called me back angry. And she says, get counseling for him or I'm pressing charges. And I told her that uh, she needed to let me see those cameras in there. And uh, that, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't take lightly to people giving me an ultimatum and I needed to see the cameras. And uh, with that, she hung up. Well, the next thing I know, uh, Matthew was uh, arrested. Well, they told me to turn him in. He was placed on a fifty—I mean, uh, a ten thousand dollar bond. I uh, turned him in. He was bonded out the same day. And um, Matthew attempted to go back to his school. August 4th, 2009, and he was turned away because of what they said happened during the summer. And I asked the, uh, I asked the, um, the principal, I said, are you turning us away? He said, yes, uh, to further orders from the DA's office and the superintendent. So Matthew, and my cousin and I left. When I came home, I called 
the Louisiana Board of Education, which is called the Bessie Board. And I spoke with uh, Lester Hitchcock there. And I explained the situation to him of what Matthew had been accused of. And th that they had, you know, uh, turned him away from his school. Mr. Hitchcock uh, then told me that um, they could not legally keep him from attending his school. He said that Matthew wasn't convicted of anything. He wasn't expelled. And um, he was a student and Ms. Anderson was, a, no, he wasn't a student and Ms. Anderson wasn't a teacher. They were uh, two school employees at that time. And if they didn't let Matthew back into his school for me to file a civil suit against them. So after that, I called Mr. Beecham, who was the superintendent, and told him of what Mr. Hitchcock said thinking that we could just work it out without me going to get a lawyer and all this stuff. So he says, well, it wasn't me that didn't want him back. It was the two principals. I said, yes, but you are the superintendent. That, that, at that time, Mr. Beecham told me that Matthew could go back to school. Matthew went back to school August 7, uh, 2009. Matthew was... Uh, scheduled for an arraignment the following Monday, which was the 11th. It was during the arra arrangement that we learned that another teacher, Ms. Carol Page Fleming Guillory, had filed a complaint against Matthew saying that she had also saw him in her school uh, exposed and uh, that uh, she didn't have she didn't know what date it was at the time, but uh, it was one day in June. And so that complaint was then added to Matthew's uh, record, which I feel it shouldn't, have had, it, sh it shouldn't have been because it was out of prescription. This is two months and some days later, with no, uh, uh, um, no date and no time. And so it, it, it should have been squashed. But anyway, they accepted it. And then she didn't have a uh, sworn affidavit. But anyway, it was added. So then they got a, a call itself getting a restraining a strain order to further keep him out of the school. It was all about keeping him out of the school. The judge said Matthew could attend his school uh, to find out who the teachers were and to stay away from the teachers. So he asked Matthew, said, Matthew, do you know who Miss Deborah Anderson is? He said, yes, sir. He says, stay away from Ms. Deborah Anderson. He said, yes, sir. He says, now, do you know who Ms. Carol Page Fleming uh, Guillory is? He said, no, sir. He said, well, find out who she is and stay away from her. He said, yes, sir. He said, now, I don't want you back in court again and you, because you, you, you have uh, been near these ladies. He said, no, sir. So Matthew, my, my cousin, uh, held his hand in court and said, well, can Matthew go back to his school? And so at that time, the, uh, the, the judge said he could go back, but he wanted him to stay away from the, the students, I mean, the, the teachers. Matthew went back to school the next morning, which was August the 12th, 2009. And uh, shortly afterwards, he called me he was in the um, he was in Jackson Police Station. He was in Jackson Police Station, and um, he said, "Mama, they have taken me from the school. I need you to come get me." So my cousin and I went to the, to the uh, Jackson Police Station, and they said that uh, Matthew wasn't supposed to be at the school, and we told them. Uh, yes, he could. The judge had okayed it. And we went backwards and forward with that for a while. And then finally they called the judge. And the judge said, yes, he told him he could go back. And um, so then they said, well, the judge has spoken. He can go back. And then uh, he said, but he had to call the DA. That's what well, I got to call the DA. So he got on the phone again and he says, uh, he says, I got to call the judge. I said, you just got off the phone with the judge. Well, I got to call him again. And what he did, he got on the cell phone, went on the outside. No, he went in a room, and then 
he like from the room he went on the outside and sit on a bench and he called the DA and the DA must have called the judge because the next thing I know I, I, I heard him saying uh-huh uh-huh okay all right like that and then he said I got some bad news for you Miss Connor and he said I'm gonna have to put him back on arrest again and I said for what he says well for the um for the the, uh, the complaint of the second teacher. I said, no, the judge ruled on that yesterday. He put both complaints on the same bill. Uh, it's this one right here. He put them both on, this, on the same bill. I said, no. He said, oh yeah, it's from Miss Carol, uh, Miss Carol Page Fleming Guillory. I said, that can't be. And he said, well, I'm gonna have to put him back under arrest again on a 72 hour hold. I said, a 72 hour hold and then I just told my son, I said, son, stay strong. We're going to get you out of this. And so Matthew was taken back to this jail here in the name of a 72-hour hold. Okay. Matthew was taken uh, from uh, uh, Jackson Police Station at that time to uh, East Feliciana Parish Prison right here on a 72 hour hold and I'm thinking after 72 hours they would let him go uh, he was he was uh, taken on a Wednesday and I'm thinking like Saturday morning they would let him come home call uh, Saturday morning no now he's on the bond so he's he's on a bond for they said they didn't know what the bond was so I hired an attorney. Come to find out the bond was for forty thousand dollars. I said forty thousand dollars for what? Nobody could tell me. So uh, I think this was like Monday. Uh, I believe it was that Tuesday. I, I posted a uh, forty thousand dollar property bond and I got Matthew out. Uh, so. Uh, at that time, I had hired an attorney, and an attorney wrote the, the uh, judge a letter wanting him to clarify whether or not he had said that Matthew could go back to his school because I needed to know and um, uh, not uh, send him, and then he'd be picked up again. And so he wrote the letter to the judge, but the judge didn't answer. And so in two or three days, uh, the truancy officer called and said that they were sorry about what had happened to Matthew that was supposed to happen. Uh, and that they wanted us to come in and apologize so they can apologize to us. And, they, and uh, they said, but in the meantime, if he wants to go back to his school, he can go back now. Ain't nothing else gonna happen to him. So um, Matthew went back to his school. Uh, he finished school, graduated May, May 2010, but he still had uh, two counts of, of, uh, of obscenity against him. And that's, that's been uh, started in 2009. This is 2012. All this time, my son has been going in and out of this court, in and out of this court for the same thing. And it's no uh, evidence that he did anything. It's uh, what he was a claim, what he was accused of. Uh, 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 the first teacher said that she was walking on the hall and she saw his private area sticking over his shorts. And he tells an entirely different story. He says he was walking on the hall and she was sitting at a desk. And after he had taken so many steps past her, then that's when she said, she asked, uh, come here, Matthew, uh, did you expose yourself? And he said, no, ma'am. And he said all he had on him was his garbage bags around his neck because he worked with the janitors. And he said he had his, uh, his cleaning fluid or his sanitizer cans in his pocket. And he was on his way, you know, to put up for the day. And she stopped him and, and told him that. And so then she says, I believe you did. And he said, no, ma'am, I didn't. And they just traded off words like that. 
And uh, then she says, she, she, look, she looks up at the ceiling, she looks at his crouch area, and she looks at the ceiling, and then she says, hmm, you may leave. So he left and went on the outside. So in a few minutes, she came downstairs to where uh, he was. And uh, she says, are you still here, Mr. Moore? And at, he, at that time, he says, yes, ma'am. And she asked him why so late. And he says, because my rider probably coming to pick me up late because my mother went to get some parts for my car. And uh, he said, then she said, have you seen Mr. Green, who is a, 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 a maintenance man there? And um, he said, no, ma'am. And she stood for a little while and then say, she turned and she just shuffled on back in the building. And he thought that she 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 come like out to test the waters, you know, to see, you know, how he was feeling, uh, uh, you know, to get some kind of uh, feed of his emotions or whatever. And um, so um, I, I, I talked to Miss Anderson. She called me and told me she wanted to talk to me, and I talked to her. And uh, Miss, Miss Anderson just told me a lot of bizarre stuff. She said that uh, she saw Matthew walking on the hall, and she turned around, and uh, uh, his his private part was sticking over his shorts. He had an erection, and I said his private parts were sticking over his shorts. She said, "Yes, Miss Connor, he was on every hall. I watched him on every hall." I said, "You watched him on every hall," and I'm th trying to think, well, how long did you watch him? So then finally, I said, "You didn't say nothing to him," and she says. Yes, I asked him if he was modeling for me. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. I said, that's an inappropriate statement if someone is exposed. I said, I, I, I find that hard to believe. I said, that's totally out of character for my son. Well, uh, uh, Miss Connie could have been on drugs. He could have been masturbating. You know, that's how they're, this bizarre, you know, over the top stuff. And it, it seemed to me like she would like, she was, like, if one thing don't work, I'll try this. I'll try something else, you know. Some will stick. So I told him at that point, I said, you got cameras in here. No, she said she was going to recommend that he be moved to another work site at that time. And I said, you have cameras in here. Let me see your cameras. And then uh, the principal, of Mr. Jones, said, when Miss, Miss, Jones, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss Anderson wouldn't lie. I said, let me just let me see the cameras. He said he did, y'all said, yeah, he said he didn't, y'all said he did. Let me see the cameras, that's what they for. They wouldn't answer me, they wouldn't talk on the cameras. So I told my son, uh, then I said, let's go. And so I went to the superintendent's office, but nobody was there that we needed to speak to. So finally, in a day or two, I caught up with the superintendent and I told him what I thought. And he was saying, well, she's a teacher. Why would she lie? I said. Many teachers lie. I said, uh, just uh, read your headlines. I said, teachers lie. They, they sometimes they have relationship with students. They um, uh, take pornographic materials and stuff like that. I said, they do a lot of things. So just because she's a teacher, she's not above the law. And uh, I said, now, I couldn't understand when I asked them to let me see the cameras. Nobody wanted to talk about that. And I said, now I'm asking you. And uh, he said, well, the camera should be on in there. And then I said, and then she said she followed him outside after she, he was so offensive to her. And I said, I don't, I don't understand that because that, that had been me. I'd have been calling somebody, uh, his supervisor, uh, somebody. And I said, then she waited so long to report it. He said, well, I'd like to know that myself. So he must have called her because she called me back then. She was mad as a hatter. And she says, get counseling for him or I'm pressing charges. And I said, uh, you, you need to let me see those cameras. Uh, let me see the cameras and, uh, and, and, and then we'll talk further. Let, you need to let me see the cameras. She hung the phone up. Then the next thing I know about, I don't know, about two weeks later, a policeman came to my door and said he came to get Matthew. First, before this, I had talked, went to the station to ask for any uh, arrest out on Matthew, a warrants out on him. They told me no. And the following night, next night, 
they said, the police came and said they came to come to pick him up. I hired him a lawyer. The lawyer kept calling, but she could never find out what the charges were. I had a friend to call, and she was told, well, we don't have anything on him, we don't have anything on him. So finally, the lawyer called me about 5 p.m. the next day, and um, that was on Monday, on Tuesday. And she said, well, he's been charged with obscenity. I said, obscenity? She says, yes, um, obscenity. So you need to turn him in. And that's when I turned him in on the $10,000 bond. And um, then uh, we got him out. And then when we went to his arraignment, then we learned about the other teacher. She had filed her complaint. Uh, she had seen him two months earlier, but didn't say anything at the time. And so they, they allowed her to add her complaint to it. But um, since that time, Matthew has been going in and out of this court, uh, uh, 20, the 20th Judicial District Court here in East Felicia and Paris since he was 17. I've had four lawyers on this case. None of the lawyers would bring the, the, uh, the um, I would make a defense for him uh, that uh, the, the second teacher's uh, uh, a complaint was out of prescription and should have been squashed. That um, the Jackson police fabricated prob probable cause because on the probable cause affidavit they got that he had his stuff in his hand walking behind her and that's not what she said. And they would not bring none of that out. Um, also that the DA, the judge and the policeman were in collusion that putting him back in jail and putting him on that high fine. We never did find out what the $40,000 bond was for. And uh, he, was, uh, he was maliciously convicted October the 20, I mean, uh, April the, the 24th, and was sentenced uh, October the 23rd and remanded to this jail, East Feliciana Parish Prison. This boy was working. He had been to technical college um, and uh, was, was gainfully employed. He's, he, he, he's not what you call a, a, a violent offender. And uh, I just think it was just low down for them to put him in jail. He had been out all this time. Uh, uh, since he's 17, he'd been out all this time. Of course, he'd been going back in and out of court. But I mean, he'd been out, out all this time. He's presented no problems and had done quite well. Even the teacher said at his trial that they didn't have any problems out of him before or afterward because they lied. They just didn't think it was going that far uh, because uh, a lawyer told me that the, sec that the first teacher said that she didn't intend for it to go that far. And if I would take her off of YouTube, that we could compromise. And I said, no, she's in the right place. And so uh, that didn't go over. And the second teacher, uh, I was told that she had, she has, uh, well, she's mentally challenged. She has bipolar dis disorder. And I think it's active because I know they said she was having to take counseling at school. So it, it, it must be active. And uh, the day that they sent us, Matthew, the day that they sent Matthew, this, this teacher got up, I mean, was, was in court herself uh, for, uh, she appeared for a drunk driving uh, hearing. And before she testified against Matthew at trial, uh, she had already been convicted of one DWI the year before. And uh, Matthew sits in this jail there's uh, no recreation here. The, the, the prisoners uh, don't go out on the yard or anything like that because they say they um, uh, 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 scrap for staff. So they don't uh, uh, leave out of their uh, cells, which I feel is inhumane. Because hum even like at um, maximum prisons like DCI and uh, Angola, the prison, prison, prisoners come out and uh, exercise at a certain time of day. And uh, before when he was in here, cause he was in here in December for a bench warrant. 
which I felt was, was cruel and low down too, it wasn't necessary. Uh, he was actually sleeping on the, fo the floor, it was so overcrowded. So it's overcrowded in there. Uh, they don't get out. And it's uh, certain times that they can use the telephone and if they miss that telephone time, that's uh, appointed to them, they can't use it anymore that day. And um, I would just like to, uh, through this medium, uh, ask the USDOJ and particularly the U.S. Department of Education to investigate and to uh, do something about the uh, school uh, pipeline to prison, because this is what this is. Uh, when young people like Matthew is labeled and has a number on them before they can walk down the graduation aisle, they got a number on them. And uh, their lives to me are already, um, you know, their, their lives are already over to a degree uh, once you label. And uh, there's a lot of that going on in this parish and especially at the East Feliciana uh, Parish 20th Judicial Court. They have kids coming in there all the time um, for, for, for nonsense things, I think, that could be solved on the school level. But they're in court. And from court, then you got a number. And uh, that number, unfortunately, it sticks with you. And so the USDOJ needs to, to really investigate school to prison pipeline in these schools, and especially, I mean, in these, uh, in these states, and especially uh, these uh, rural parishes like this one, East Feliciana, and in other uh, southern states because uh, this is what they're doing. And also, uh, just investigate incarcerations, period. There are more uh, African-American and, and uh, brown people uh, locked up in jail in the whole entire prison nation. And some, uh, some poor whites. It's like a, a class thing, but it's more a minority. And a lot of these people haven't did anything to be locked up. I, 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 just, I just think that sometimes these uh, wardens and uh, jailers and judges, prosecutors, have stock in the prison. And so that's their way of getting money, by putting you in there. And uh, it's, it's, it's not fair. And, and I hope that uh, the USDOJ will start looking into this look into uh, what happened to Matthew, like I said, and it's more cases just like his uh, here. Uh, no evidence whatsoever, but because they were teachers, you know, uh, they could get away with that. Thank you.